All right, hello and welcome everybody back to Otronicon. This is day three. Um, this morning we have a really great um, presentation, but first I want to make sure that you know how to submit any questions, comments, or even um, any chat that you would like. So there should be a question box either to the side or to the top of your screen. If it is not a physical box, it will be a circle with a question mark in it. Go ahead and click on that circle and then there should be a box that appears where you can send in any kind of information you'd like to. If you're having any technical difficulties, also go ahead and send that there. We'll make sure to connect with you and help you get connected. Um, and with that said, I'm going to pass it off to Jeanette. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I'm Jeanette Johnson, the co-founder and creative director of Wall Crawl. And today, as promised, we'll be speaking about the science behind what universally brings us joy. So first, I just wanted to start off by sharing a little bit more about myself and why I am so passionate about this topic. So my journey really began in 2010. I started a fashion blog, what's now known as a fashion blog. And I did so with the intent of actually wanting to change the landscape of fashion journalism. I wanted it to be more inclusive of sort of realistic fashion and budget-friendly fashion. And to my surprise, and I think everyone else's, it completely took off and it became my full-time job very quickly. And I found myself working with companies like Macy's and JCPenney and Nordstrom regularly. I employed a team. Um, it became a whole animal of its own. And what was interesting about that is I noticed that I actually had some tension in my life about that because I grew up and I was raised that aesthetics, decorating ourselves, decorating our surroundings are really just not something we spend our time and money on. It was not as important, you know, creativity and kind of lollygagging around is not as important as hard work. And it just was not something that I ever um, felt like I should spend a lot of time on or that was important. And so for me to be finding myself in a career that was pretty much all creative and aesthetics based um, really created a lot of tension in my life. So I actually wound up writing a book about it that was published by Waterfall Press in 2017. And the part of my journey that is most relevant to today's talk, we'll be speaking about it a lot, is wall crawl. So um, my husband and I opened wall crawl in August 2019 in downtown Orlando. And it's really easier to show you wall crawl than to explain it because it's such a visual business, but this is just a snapshot of our um, Instagram. So just a few pictures to look at. And essentially what wall crawl is, is a photo studio with a twist. So you can go there with your family, just like you would a mall photo studio and get professional photos taken. Um, we also charge by an admission fee. So you can actually go and take your own photos with your phone or your camera. It's a great resource for photographers to take their clients and take photos of them or to complete their own personal projects. We've had some music videos shot there. And it's also a great place to gather, certainly, um, more so before COVID, we had a lot of events, but still some small gatherings um, here and there. So why wall crawl, right? So this talk today about the science behind what brings us joy and also why joy is important um, is really near and dear to my heart because my husband and I, we put all of our resources into opening this business. We did it completely alone. We bootstrapped a lot, everything along the way. And for us, the mission is to spread joy. That is why we do what we do. It's why we show up every day. We aim to put smiles on people's faces. And sometimes that can be tough still with my upbringing. I'm still working in an aesthetic-based job. And ultimately, I know and we all know that our frontline workers, our doctors and our nurses are out there saving lives. And what we're doing at Wall Crawl is not saving lives. <laughs> it's not quite that cool. Um, but I will say that having studied this topic for years and a lot of the science and research that I'm going to present today, I've just really come to believe that joy and creativity is an absolutely noble cause. And it's something that um, we should absolutely feel comfortable spending our time and efforts on. So without further ado, um, we'll get started. And if we're going to be talking about joy, we absolutely have to define joy first. So interestingly, scientists um, will often use the words joy, happiness, positivity. Yes? I'm so sorry. We don't see your screen. Oh, 
goodness gracious. Um, how do I? So there we go. Now I'm seeing. It was uh, there. Oh, there. There, there we go. go. Thank you All so right. much. I was actually wondering about that. I was like, I wonder if they can see that. Thank you. No problem. So this was the slide before, just real quick, so everyone can see. This was the snapshot of wall crawl. Gives you just a little bit of an idea. So there's 20 different walls that change seasonally. And we'll be talking a lot about the design elements behind it because I'm the one that creates the walls and we release about 40 new designs every year. So it changes often. Okay, so what is joy? So as I was saying, researchers, or I'm sorry, scientists rather, um, they're usually very precise with their language. However, they often use the words joy, happiness and positivity and overlapping or even interchangeably. And so for this, to the purposes of today's talk, we're gonna be focused more on the way that psychologists define joy. And um, that's to say that it's a very different emotion than happiness. And it's a much stronger, less common feeling. It comes on suddenly and it makes us wanna jump up and down, which is actually the technical measurement that researchers use to measure joy is does this feeling make me want to jump up and down, which I absolutely love. Like that, that's a technical measurement. So Merriam-Webster has a lot of different definitions of joy, but I thought this one resonated the most with the joy that we're talking about today, which is a state of felicity, a source or cause of delight. And I love this analogy from Diffin.com. So it says, imagine happiness as a hundred story building and each level corresponds to happiness value. And that happiness can persist for a long time at any level. Joy is the elevator in the building that takes you up to higher levels of happiness only for a small time amount of time and back. So again, that jump up and down feeling. And in my opinion, joy is almost impossible to resist when it does come. It's kind of like a sneeze, it's like this burst. And so if I asked you right now, what makes you happy? You might say things like having strong relationships or finding success at work, being healthy, making my kids happy. These are typically more long-term in a sense, harder to control and a little more complicated those levels of the building. But if I ask what makes you feel joy, you might say things like blowing bubbles, Legos, hopscotch, fireworks, ice cream cones. These are very specific and things that you can actively seek out and have control over. So that's kind of the difference and what we mean when we say joy when we're talking about it today. So that's what joy is, but why does it matter? So I absolutely love this. Um, the author, Neil Samudre, wrote this little excerpt that I wanna read because it so captures my own um, interesting tension around <laughs> this, this topic. He says, joy is often thought of a frivolous and hokey sentiment. It's a squishy concept lumped with happiness and together they frolic in fields and make a regular occurrence in Disney films. Hardly anyone knows how to speak about joy or make it a priority in life. So why would I believe joy is necessary and why would I pursue it? Today's society needs more joy, but is cynical about experiencing it. So I wanna make the case today for taking joy more seriously, first and foremost, because there are health benefits. So when we're stressed, we know that we get a shot of adrenaline and our blood pressure increases. Moments of joy are actually shown to release dopamine in the body, which effectively resets you back to homeostasis. Some studies have even found that people who laugh every day, for example, are less likely to have a stroke. There's a ton of research out there about laughing and happiness and joy, if we can use this interchangeably in that case, and how they can really affect your health. So that's hard to argue with. That's some science for you right there. Next, it's contagious. So when you are in the habit of seeking out joy, studies show that you find yourself attracting more and more joy throughout your day. It's also contagious to those around you. So one of my favorite examples of this is I don't have to be at wall crawl myself to experience the joy that happens there. Just seeing how happy people are um, in the photos that they post gives me a little jolt of joy um, throughout the day. Joy also keeps us present. So joy is a, an emotion that we experience here and now, which means we're less likely to be worrying about the past, to be anxious about the future. Instead, we're enjoying that moment and being fully present, connecting with whoever we're with. Think about how you feel when you're engaged in play or an act of creativity, for example. It helps you unplug from your world for just a moment, and it's a great source of joy. Another good one, it makes us resilient. So there's a study done at the University of Michigan in 2004 that's well known. It's called the Broaden and Build Theory. 
which has subsequently been studied and expanded upon. And it says that, in essence, positive emotions like joy help us bounce, bounce back faster from negative experiences. And not only does joy help us bounce back, but it can even make us more immune to those negative experiences in the first place. So one of my very first, my very favorite quotes um, from Brene Brown is, she's technically talking about creativity here, but I think there's a lot of overlap because um, the way that she describes this unused creativity we have, it's like we're not tapping into our joy. So I'll tell you the quote first. She says, unused creativity is not benign. It metastasizes. It turns into grief, rage, judgment, sorrow, shame. We are creative beings. We are by nature creative. So this ties back into this idea that um, joy actually makes us more immune to negative experiences in the first place. Because when we're full of joy, we're not letting that creativity metastasize. So there you go. <laughs> um, but I absolutely love this. this has been one of my um, biggest whys for opening wall crawl is just creating a place for people that can come and get creative and use that creativity. All right, next, it makes us more productive. So um, one of my favorite studies, one of my favorite companies is nonprofit Public Color. So they actually go around painting schools in bright colors and just adding murals and things like that. And administrators say that at those schools, it improves attendance when Public Color comes in, the graffiti disappears and kids actually say they feel safer. This also aligns with research conducted in four different countries which shows that people working in more colorful offices are actually more alert, more confident, and friendlier than those working in drab, all beige spaces. And last but not least, it brings us together. So ask someone what sparks joy for you, and you will most likely find some overlap in what brings you joy. I mean, who doesn't love an ice cream cone, right? So in today's world, where we can often feel so divided across so many issues, joy is a great bridge for building connection and harmony and it reminds us that our shared humanity, the building blocks that create joy are almost universally the same for all of us. So our opening, our motivation for opening wall crawl was to spread joy and um, be a place for creativity based on a lot of this research. We watched the TED talk by Ingrid Fuddle called Where Joy Hides and Where to Find It and truly really, um, kept me up at night. I highly recommend it. It's, it's, I've, presented a lot of the research here and I'm going to be talking about her book, but she showed how beige our world can be and how much, you know, painting a school, for example, matters. And we felt like we want to do something about this. So we did. So next we're going to talk about specifically what brings us joy in the physical world. And these are, um, all a lot of elements that when I'm designing for wall crawl, I'm naturally drawn to, but I want to know what does science say. It certainly helps me in my journey when I feel that tension between is this really a noble cause? Um, what I'm doing, is it really helping people? I always want to come back to the science and the research and say, what's there? What what can we learn? And so this next section is um, you can consider it a little mini Cliff's Notes or book report on the book Joyful by the same woman I mentioned earlier, Ingrid Fetta Lee, um, inspired by her TED Talk. I got the book. Absolutely love it. If you enjoy this part of the talk, I definitely recommend getting the book and reading it yourself. It's awesome. So she goes through, um, she is a senior design researcher, and so she talks about the research and the science behind why certain things make us really happy. And so the first one is energy. And energy is really also known as color because color is energy made visible in the world. And brightness is a dimension like sunshine, for example, universally understood to be joyful. So the science behind this is really simple. Our inherent instinct has always been to find colorful things to eat in nature. And so our nourishment became intertwined with joy. And so we think about our you know, gut nourishment is intertwined with joy, but also our, our joy is intertwined now with finding energy or color. So I think one of the first things you notice about wall crawl right away is that there is so much color. It is just booming with color, probably a bit much to put this in your house. I mean, you do you, but it's a little bit much, <laughs> but it's so fun to be in this environment um, for a short time and take pictures there and, and really get creative. 
The next one is abundance. So some examples of this are confetti, rainbow sprinkles, polka dots, stripes, small things repeated many times create more joy than just one alone. For example, one confetto, which is the singular of confetti, is literally just a round dot. It really does not speak much to you, it does not spark much joy, but a bunch of them together is fabulous. So the science behind this is the legacy of our hunter-gatherer ancestors because our biological nature is designed to help us navigate a scarce and uncertain world. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I feel like we're naturally drawn to abundance because abundance is awesome. We want to have enough food in our lives. We want to have enough resources in our lives. And even if this is not, this could be different things for anyone. It can be that feeling you get when you look at your coin collection because there's a lot of them in sequence together. If you're a chef, it's your spice collection. You have hundreds or thousands of spices. It's this idea that we have enough of something, even if you're a minimalist in most of your life, I feel like certain places where abundance is just makes you, gives you this feeling, uh, really satisfied feeling when things are in abundance. And certainly we know small children are not minimalists. Um, infants constantly seek sensory input. They want all the things all the time. And this actually helps with synaptic pruning for them. And it still helps us as, an, as adults, this synaptic pruning. So they actually use a therapy in the Netherlands to help dementia patients using multi-sensory multi environments of abundance. And so some examples of this at wall crawl is we have um, all these books, these brightly colored books, right? It would not have the same effect if it were just a couple of books or one book. And on the right, those are thousands of post-its that I hung <laughs> by hand. And, but it gives you this joyful feeling because there's so many of them. It's this feeling of abundance. Um, and I love, I love this one especially because it makes so much sense, but I never would have known to call it abundance. I think it's um, so often used in design and we don't even understand why completely, but knowing the science behind it is just really neat. So one of my favorite walls on the left here, we have literally thousands of pieces of candy and it just gives you this feeling of like, yes, like. Who doesn't want, even if you're not eating all of it, because we don't eat those, but um, it's just so fun to have, available to look at, you know, just gives you this happy feeling. And on the right, a wall with like hundreds of hearts. It's the same idea. So we use abundance a lot, really many or most of the um, images from wall crawl can definitely be considered in this category of abundance. All right, next up is play. So Stuart Brown says that play is an instinctive subcortical primal force in humans. The need for play does not stop after childhood. So the science behind this, um, one study shows that looking at rounded facial features of babies or cartoon characters stimulates our medial orbit of frontal cortex, which gives us the urge to play. Play is often dismissed as frivolous or unnecessary, but a study in Japan recently showed increase in concentration and conscientiousness after looking at cute babies and animals. And maintaining a childlike perspective helps us keep open to fresh new ideas. So I love this quote also from the book. It says, Disney is valuable because it's one of the few places where adults give themselves permission to play. And we second that wholeheartedly and wanted to add wall crawl to the mix as a place where you can certainly play. So some examples are um, circles are, are again, that rounded feature um, gives us the urge to play. Anything with nostalgia, and props you can touch. So we are big on getting you involved in the picture and bringing out, it really brings out your playful side. Um, play is obviously more something that you can do in a sense, but aesthetically it's about urging you to play. So um, the books that you could play with as these women are on the right being hilarious in my opinion, they did a whole series of photos like this together, clearly had no fun whatsoever. And then phones are also a big prop that we use a lot. Um, which is so funny because their kids are like, what is this? <laughs> um, but it's a lot of fun and it gives you something to play with. So we do things that urge you to touch and play. All right, next is transcendence. This one is so much fun. So we use these phrases in our language all the time, walking on air, be on cloud nine, swept off our feet. Um, transcendence is things like the wonder of flight and beating gravity. So we we tend to love things like Ferris wheels and tree houses and butterflies and clouds and bubbles. Um, I, be, I have a feeling at least one of those things 
sparks joy for you. Certainly most of them do for me. And the science behind this is simply that um, research has shown that gaining elevation, even just going up one flight of stairs, helps us focus on the big picture and less on the details. Elevation and a sense of lightness is really a universal metaphor for joy, which is why it's so often found in our language. So at Wall Crawl, again, I found myself just um, so drawn to transcendence without even realizing it. You know, we use these elements so often in amusement parks and places like that without even realizing it. So on the left, we have um, our birthday cake in the sky. So it's got clouds and the higher balloons give you the sense of lightness. Um, on the right, we've had a couple of different swings at wall crawl and they are always so popular. People love swinging around and just that feeling of lightness and elevation. It can really come through in like a fun photo. There's also things, um, we use a lot of inflatables, which are uh, you know full of air. Obviously some of them are even kind of floating off the ground. And on the left, um, we, we posted this bubble picture, which was like a little creative mini project someone wanted to do and people were coming in to recreate it. It was, it's so fun because that bubble again is just so um, something that brings people joy. And I think it's a great example of transcendence. All right, next up is harmony. So harmony can be found in so many places in our scientific world. It's the symmetry found in galaxies and atoms. It's repetitive beats like heartbeats. It's fractals in nature. And then it's for us objects organized by color, gradient, size, etc. So joy is this pleasurable awe sensation we get when we see related objects as a group because our limbic system actually rewards us with joy for staying alert to making correlations and connections and recognizing patterns. So again, dating back to our ancestors, we were rewarded for noticing, hey, that pattern is a snake, or hey, these things are organized in a very um, organized way, which really helps with me getting dinner made and helps me survive. So just all these ways that our brain literally rewards us when things are put into a, a harmonizing pattern. So we have a lot of this at Wall Crawl too. There's a lot of patterns that we use. Um, and a lot of these are also examples of other things too. So clearly both of these pictures are also abundance and they're also showing color. Um, but the harmony is that all these candies are organized by color into each individual jar. So we don't see all the colors mixed up in different jars, but they're all in their individual places where they should go. And with the flamingos, it's um, organized into a pattern. The stripes are all the same width. Everything's very symmetrical. Even the symmetry of the beach balls themselves, this is very soothing to look at. And then these are two more examples. Um, obviously the leopard spots on the right, that is literally in nature, um, something, an example of something that your limbic system would reward you for spotting leopard spots because you'd want to stay safe. And on the left, um, there's harmony because all the colors are the same, all of these jars on the wall, um, they're all you know, in a similar color tone and they're organized together and there's just this wonderful awe sensation we get um, when we look at it. All right, so next up is surprise. So one of the best examples of surprise is like yarn bombing in an otherwise gray landscape or even um, graffiti or a mural in like a surprising place, hidden gifts like pinatas, king cakes and Easter eggs and essentially what surprise does is it acts as a force multiplier for joy. So when something that's already joyful is placed in an unlikely setting, something different acts like this concentrated tincture spreading through water. And the science behind this, at just three months old, infants can detect the different object. So even at that young, you put, the, you put some objects there and which one's different and they can tell the difference. So our ancestors, our ancestors' survival depended upon being able to spot these changes what's unusual in your surroundings, it's not just spotting those patterns, but it's what's out of place here, what looks different. Um, and so at wall crawl, you know, I often call it visual overload because you're certainly surprised at every corner. Even if you've seen pictures online, I think it still gives you this feeling, which I likely think is joy. <laughs> when you experience it in person, it just surprises you because it's so ridiculous in so many ways. And even um, we're in kind of an industrial area in the burst of color, comes out of nowhere, you walk up these stairs and you're just sort of surprised with all of these amazing um, sort of over the top sensory overload things. 
All right, so, <coughs> excuse me. Magic. So magic is, um, there's lots of examples, mermaids, unicorns, superheroes, in nature, it's the northern lights, fireflies, meteors, bioluminescence, prisms. Magic is, by definition, a gap between cognitive understanding and the sensory reality before us. So psychologists have actually found that those who don't believe in suffer, magic suffer from anhedonia. There's literally a word for it, which is the inability to enjoy life at all. And magic is valuable because it imbues life with a deeper sense of meaning. I absolutely love that. Um, there's a good argument for joy right there is that you don't want to not be able to enjoy your life at all. <laughs> so at Wall Crawl, we use magic a lot. Um, this unicorn obviously is a magical creature, which by the way, is just a carousel horse that we turned into a unicorn with a 3D printer. Um, but don't tell the little kids that because they really think it's a unicorn. And um, the teddy bear, this huge oversized teddy bear has a, a life of its own. You kind of imagine that it's real and you want to interact with it. And then on the left, you have sort of these, these giant wings that makes you feel like you're a mythical creature yourself. And on the right, our 2D cafe um, is so popular. And I think partly because it makes you look twice and you kind of wonder is that real what am I looking at here I think there's a sense of magic in um, painting a room to look like this and it, it truly sparks joy when you're there and when you see pictures of it all right last but not least and there are a lot more examples of course in the book the book is very in-depth it's very good like I said I highly recommend it um, but is celebration so celebration is a distinctly social form of joy, and it includes things like music and the power of synchronicity, but also bursts of energy like a champagne cork, glitter, disco balls, fireworks, pom-poms, balloons, and stretch limos. So the science behind this is um, at the heart of celebration is a mathematical paradox. The more we share joy, the more it grows. Celebration broadcasts our joy far and wide so that others can join in, and the more generous we are with our joy, the more we have for ourselves. So at Wall Crawl, we are all about celebration. I think so many of our walls um, speak to this, which is a couple of examples. We've got confetti and disco balls. They clearly look like they're celebrating something on the left. And our birthday cake is, or just our cake in general, is um, always a fun photo to snap so that you can post it on a day that you're celebrating something. We love celebrating with you. So in conclusion, the results. So I think in today's day and age, it just feels like people are more hungry for connection and creativity than ever. Um, and, you know, when we first opened before COVID, we heard from people, you know, this is so much fun and they enjoyed getting creative um, in our space. But now what we're hearing every day is thank you for being open and thank you for doing this in a, in a safe and responsible way. We have very limited capacities right now. We have tons of different um, safety protocols in place, but people are just so thankful that they have somewhere that they can go that is away from their, you know, at home Zoom life and they can just experience something that's really over the top that encourages play, that encourages creativity. Um, we've also had uh, seen a lot of companies wanting Wall Crawl to come in and create um, colorful backdrops and things in their own spaces. This idea of just spreading, you know, the color and the abundance and all of these design elements far and wide to increase joy everywhere has been really exciting to see more and more people embracing that because we still do live in a little bit of a beige world, you know, typically hospitals, offices, schools, they can be really neutral, um, which is great, but we are big, big fans of having, you know, a little bit of joy infused here and there with your design. And certainly I hope that um, this has inspired you to insert a little joy into your day. There's so many free and easy ways to do so. I hope this gave you some ideas. Um, we mostly focused on the aesthetics of joy, but at the same time, there's so many things like petting your dog that bring joy that are free and don't have to do as much with aesthetics. Um, and so I just want to close with um, posing a question of thinking about where do you find joy? Perhaps it's the symmetry and harmony of a spreadsheet full of numbers. Maybe it's when the gears perfectly match up in your latest project. Maybe it's the play of tinkering in your workshop or the abundant feeling you get by collecting lots of stamps or artifacts and displaying them. 
I would love to hear from you in the comments or you can email me or, or send us a DM on Instagram. Or if you have any questions, let me know. But I hope this got you thinking about joy and ways you can seek it out in your own life and why it's so important. And that's it. Awesome, and we do have a question. When awesome. designing a wall, do you start with the theme and then try to bring in those elements of joy? Or do you start with an element of joy and find a theme to match? I love this question because I think it would surprise people and the artists that we work with to complete these visions often. I have to um, forewarn them that so much of what we do is very practicality first. So it's very right brain, left brain. We're working with a very specific amount of space, for example, um, in the confines of a very specific budget usually. And so I often will identify which spaces are going to be changed first. And then I have a long list of, um, typically they're very like high level ideas like mermaids and um, beach chairs and things that are very, um, could be interpreted so many different ways. And I kind of match them up with the space and then we get really particular into what it looks like. So I think that a lot of these elements of joy, I really am just naturally drawn to them. I love all of these things. And for me, now that I've read this book and understand it and love it um, and have studied it, I certainly will remember as I'm going along like, oh, yes, abundance. And I will remind myself like, go nuts with that, do a ton of them, because the more you do, the more you're going to get that abundant feeling. But I think for the most part, it just is something that comes naturally. I just really enjoy having the science behind it and knowing um, why we do what we do and why we uh, feel joy when we look at it, because it just helps me feel like we really are uh, meeting that mission statement to spread joy and that I can feel confident that science backs me up, that these are ways to make put smiles on people's faces. So for people who are interested in coming out to visit, what should they expect? Well, if you want to go to wallcrawl.com slash tour, you can actually see what the space looks like right now. I feel like that helps give, get the best visual. It's actually like a, I think it's like a 50 second video that just like scans the room so you can get a feeling. But they're wide open spaces. Um, typically, you're probably going to come during general admission. So you want to make sure that you have a ticket in advance before you come. Because of COVID, we actually lock our doors. We're closed for half an hour between every session to like let things kind of ventilate and to do additional cleaning. And so you're going to want to make sure you have a spot because often um, we do sell out in advance almost always. So you want to make sure that you can get in before you come all the way downtown. Um, so I would say get your ticket online, look at the tour so you know what to expect. So we do have a changing room where you can change your outfit one to two times if you'd like. And if you want um, a photo package with our photographers, you could do that at checkout too. So it's very customizable to what you, how you want to use the space. And so um, really there's lots, lots of different options. So what to expect really kind of depends on how you want to use it. In your designs, as you continue to use more different elements of joy, do you find that you can see that in people's pictures where you see those different elements are increasing your joy when you add them? Yeah, I don't know if I look at it like that minutely, like I don't have like a spreadsheet that's tracking it. I'm, it's very anecdotal of how the walls are performing, but I'm always asking, so I'm not typically on site on the day-to-day, -day, so I'm asking, always asking our photography team what walls are people liking? How are they liking it? Um, why are they liking it? And then I am online, I'm on, I do our socials, so I'm always seeing what people are posting the most. And certainly I do pay attention to just anecdotally um, how they're inter interacting with it, you know? Does this wall, are people often jumping for joy in front of it? You know, that's one of the biggest, again, expressions of joy. It's the, the definition of it. And so I do try to keep track of just what, what walls people are posting the most, how they're kind of acting in front of it. We certainly get our fair share of people that are posting what I would call more like serious, like modely photos, especially if they actually are a professional model and they come in. So they're not always jumping for joy and um, posing in those ways, but I definitely do see a fair amount of people, especially little kids, you know, throwing up a beach ball in the air and just being really happy 
and I pay attention to what those are and then try to bring those elements into future walls and sort of repeat without repeating um, what has done so well in the past and then the ones that don't so, do so well, we just don't do those again. And how often do you get to change or how often do you come up with new ideas? So I pretty much eat, sleep, and drain walls 24 seven, 365 days a year. Um, it is my full-time job it, and it does take all year long because we change quarterly. So four times a year, we change about half the space. So we do on average um, 10 walls four times a year. So about 40 new concepts a year. And I actually, um, I'm really big into upcycling. So a lot of the objects are like found objects on Facebook marketplace and places like that, that I actually will give a total makeover and paint. And um, I spend time getting that ready and then we'll hire artists to, to do different elements and they'll be working on those in the months in between our install weeks too. So it is, um, keeps me very busy and there's, we're always looking for new ideas. If you're an artist, please reach out. I would love to connect with you. If you have an idea of a wall that you'd love to see, please let me know. So we are always, always, always thinking ahead. I'm almost thinking to Christmas already for this year. That's how far in advance <laughs> we work. Is there a theme that has been your favorite or stood out to you the most? Oh, it's funny. I always go to the Flamingo Wall, but it's because it is the wall that started the entire idea of wall crawl. Um, my husband, we were, so we were thinking about what we wanted to do next with our lives. Um, I was kind of wanting to move on from blogging and he was working with me on the blog full time at the time and he wanted to open a photo studio. And so I was like, great, that sounds great. And we were looking at these, he was gonna, it was gonna be a blank space for professionals only to like bring their clients. And I went with him to look at a space and I said, I wanna create this flamingo wall. I wanna put a bunch of lawn flamingos on the wall. I don't even know where this idea came from. So I had never done anything like that. I'd never even painted a wall in my life. And it just kept me up at night and I kept thinking about it and I thought, well, if I do this wall, why don't we let other people use it? And then it just really got completely out of control where we thought, okay, let's just make a bunch of walls and that will be the business and the people can come in and use them. So it was the one, it was like sort of the first um, strike of the match. So I always think of that one and it was really popular. We had it for, I think our whole entire first year, um, people absolutely loved it. And I, you want to talk about, a wall that brought a lot of joy. I think people enjoyed having beach balls to throw up in the air. So there were a lot of boomerangs that people would do with that wall. And there's just a lot of really fun photos that came out of it. So I have another a couple other walls coming up for summer that have beach balls. And it's because of that um, mango wall for sure and how much fun it was. That's awesome. So um, your wall crawl space is obviously very innovative. It's very different in the fact that, it, like you said, it's not like a photo space. But was it like kind of, um, you know, entering a new frontier and being an innovative business as you're opening up? Yeah, so talk about um, how different my husband and I are. We're very similar in some ways, but I'm over here like, I'm dreaming backdrops. I just need you to get me a building so I can start painting because I, it was like I couldn't sleep at night. Like I just wanted to start painting and I kind of, struggled to even care about the business side. I just wanted to get it done. <laughs> it was like this project inside me that was like dying to come out. And my husband who uh, got his MBA from UCF and actually taught there in the business school for a while, he was downtown interviewing people on the street saying, right, my wife and I are thinking about opening a business and it's gonna be X, Y, and Z. Would you be interested in coming? How much would you pay for a ticket? I mean, he had a spreadsheet going um, he was talking to different photographers. What would you need for your clients? What would the price point need to be? Bless his heart. Like this is how different we are, but it's, it's so wonderful because he can do all of the amazing things that I, my brain does not work that way. I'm just like, ah, walls. When can I, when can I create them? And he, um, did a ton of research, looked up, you know, everything about what are, uh, traditional photo studios, like in the mall charging. Um, what do other entertainments and pop-ups charge and what are they doing differently? He interviewed people that had been to like Instagram pop-ups and got all of their customer service complaints. And it's like, we're going to do things completely differently. Um, if you're familiar with the pop-up model, 
the diff the main difference i love this um, metaphor is that pop-ups are similar to like a carnival or a county fair you know they're in town for a little while they're sort of transient and wall crawl is the first ever amusement park for photos we stay in one place we're committed to customer service it's a place that we want you to come back every single year for your birthday or as your family grows we're already seeing that with our customers who come back again and again and it's just a completely different way of treating photos that sort of combines a lot of different business models so he did his due diligence and you put his mba to work in creating an amazing business plan and um, spreadsheet is really fascinating actually to watch him work through all those problems so is there anything next for wall crawl that we should suspect oh there's so many things next for wall crawl uh we actually have had well over 100 requests for uh, opening franchises across the country they started pouring in like the week we opened a lot of our um guests do come from out of town and so they'll ask you know when can you open one in my home state so we are definitely working on expansion and should hopefully have some exciting announcements fairly soon so just stay tuned follow us on social follow along or sign up for email and we'll be sharing hopefully some good news soon awesome well, we're about out of time is there any final thoughts you would like um you know them to know about joy your company or you I think I just talked their ear off <laughs> for <laughs> however long that was, so I'm sure. <laughs> but if I did miss anything and you want to know more, please feel free to reach out. If you DM the wall crawl account, you'll typically get me. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you to the audience who joined us. And I will go ahead and close out the webinar. Thanks, guys. Bye.